Hey, how's it going out there, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Cash, and this is Weekly Recap, where I'm going to go over my week of operating a semi-truck in the United States. I'm leased onto a reefer carrier. I don't talk about the carrier. We just run reefer freight. It is what it is. What else I need to talk about? Uh, this week is going to be from May 2024. The video's from now, but the, the, when I ran the freight was back in May. Uh, this is uh, mostly reefer freight. If it's not, I'll let you know. And uh, this is just me going over my numbers of what I did. Um, if you don't understand something, leave it in the comments. I'll try to answer all the questions and all the comments I can. And if uh, you know I do something here that irritates you or makes you mad, I don't know. That's on you. I, I can't make everybody happy not trying to. I do it my way, and if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, hit the thumbs down, maybe. I don't know. Uh, so YouTube won't recommend it to you anymore. If you do like it, though, woo, let's talk about the do's, not the don'ts. Smash that like button for me. Think about becoming a subscriber. I'd much appreciate it. Now, let's get on to the week. So, uh, you know, I like to go Minnesota out and back. Everybody knows this. That's my thing. And uh, so I came back to Minnesota on the end of last week. And I was looking for something out of Minnesota. And let me tell you, back in May, Minnesota was not a good place to be. I think what it is, a lot of people don't come up to Minnesota because of the weather in the winter. But then they, they get to feeling it about May because they're like, <clears throat> probably... Probably not a great chance it's going to snow. There is a chance, but not a great chance. So they risk it, and they come on up, and they push them rates way on down, you know, because trucking supply and demand, we all know that. So I uh, didn't do so great coming out of Minnesota. I took a load Minnesota to Florida. Yes, Minnesota to Florida. 38,000 pounds, negative 10 degrees. And uh, that load was in a gosh darn hurry. Let me tell you, that was Buford T. Justice right there. That was a two-day run. 11 empty miles, 14.01 on the loaded miles. Less than two days, like 46 hours from load to delivery. It's not unheard of, but for me, that's pushing it a little bit. This load was supposed to have been picked up the day before, but it wasn't ready. So they said, uh, you know, you still want to do it? And I said, hey. You know, I love doing what they say can't be done. You know what I mean? So I said, put it on there. I'll try it. Uh, it was going to a Target in Florida. So I did not want to be late to that. I actually missed my exit and showed up like five minutes late after all that hard work of, you know, exactly 30 minute breaks, exactly 10 hour breaks. I missed the exit at the last darn minute and end up five minutes late. <laughs> oh, man, it's a real bee in the bonnet, but whatever. Uh, they didn't say nothing about it. They took it. They unloaded it. All is well. Uh, like I said, that load 11 empty miles, 1401 on the loaded, 38,000 pounds, negative 10 degrees. And that load paid $2,900. Yes. Barely $2 a mile out of Minnesota. Ouch. Ouch. I hope freight gets better paying soon. But I'm not going to complain because this overall was a good week. We, we, we took the lemons and we made lemonade and it was quite refreshing. Okay. Got down to Florida. Now this was like produce season was hitting. That's why loads down to Florida weren't paying that great also because, you know, with all this uh, electronic and, and tracking they have now, they know where everybody's at and where, what they can do. And, you know, used to you could get a decent rate down to Florida and produce season gets you a decent rate out and do pretty good. But now they know everybody's trying to get down there, so they just you got to take a hit to even get down there. So I took $2 a mile to get down there. Wasn't the worst thing in the world. I can make money at $2 a mile. Don't want to do it all the time, but if I got to, I got to. We get down to Florida. Um, I got unloaded, had a reload that afternoon for a straight through. On and my next load was Florida to Florida. Uh, 60 empty miles, 141 miles on the loaded. Uh, 201 total miles, and that load paid $800, and it was 43,000 pounds, uh, 34 degrees. 
And it, it, the main reason I like that load, it wasn't, you know, a stellar load. Number one, it's a decent day rate for these times we're in. You know, I figure like 700 is kind of my minimum day rate right now that I like to be at. I ain't saying I got to have it. You got me up with the right situation. I might take a little less for a day rate, but it's, uh, you know, 200 miles, not a bad day. They had parking at the shipper. I went there, uh, slept for a couple hours. They called me. They loaded me. I drove it straight through two hours, three hours to get to the receiver, parked there. They woke me up the next morning. We unloaded. I mean, really, it didn't tie up a whole day. You know, it was like got unloaded, got reloaded, got unloaded by the next morning, was free and clear, ready to go. So not bad for a day rate, okay? Uh, The next load, banger of a load. Banger, man. Uh, this was, this is what you want right here. When you're in a hot market, like Florida produce season, this is what you're looking for. They called me up. They said, we got a load. It's got a load right now. It cannot wait. And I was like, well, right time, right place. You know, I always say your best negotiating skills as a truck driver is to have the right equipment in the right place at the right time. That's pretty much all you got. So I I had all three of those popping and, uh, I got me another Florida to Florida. This one was 62 empty miles, 47 loaded miles, 250 pounds. Yes, five cases of peppers. I'll put a picture up here. This is what the load looked like right here. Uh, 250 pounds, 55 degrees, one pick, three drops, literally just right down the road. I don't, you could have put these in your car and took them over there. But instead, they hired me to do it. And the price was $1,500. Yes, $1,500. It was 109 all-in miles. Uh, I picked it up at like 3 p.m., maybe 1 p.m., something like that. Uh, I went down the road. I did the first delivery, which was literally, when I say right down the road, I mean like three miles down the road to the first delivery. I went and did that one. And it's literally cases of bell peppers. I didn't even back into their docks. I literally just pulled up beside their docks, knocked on the door, gave them the paperwork, hopped up in the trailer, grabbed them their peppers and said, here you go. And, uh, you know, threw the pallets off in their pallet pile and went to the next one. Um, So I could have done all of those that afternoon, but I had been out in the heat all day and uh, I kind of wanted to take a shower. So I went to the truck stop. Technically, they, the three stops were supposed to be in the next morning, but I got one off that day, went to the truck stop, did the next two the next morning. I was done by like the stores. They were going to actual stores, not like warehouses. Uh, the stores opened at eight, I think, eight or nine. I was done by 930, I think. Uh, so great day rate on that for this market. To get 1500 on a day rate on a 55 degree load used hardly no reefer fuel on that. Um, you know, technically, I probably money wise, I should have did all three stops that afternoon. That way, I could have just turned the reefer unit off. But I figured at 55 degrees, I'm not losing my butt on it. And I really, you know, sometimes, you know, when you get that funk, that shower, that shower's precedent. You know what I mean? Like, I pay hundred dollars for a shower if I had to. I mean, tax write off and whatnot, right? You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes when I need a shower, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Um, so wrap that up and uh, thought about banging around in Florida a little bit more, but then I got this other load that was going um, out of Florida, and it was another good run, and it was going to wrap it up, make a good week out of it kind of got me back to the midwest uh so i took it it was offered and i took it so that load was uh florida to kentucky and ohio it had one stop in kentucky and shepherdsville and then the rest went up 71 and it was like uh two stops in the cincinnati area and then one stop up around dayton area so really good load here uh especially coming out of florida that was 36 empty miles 965 loaded miles, 1,001 total miles, and that was 29,000 pounds, 36 degrees, start and stop. Finally, a load where they didn't recommend continuous all the time. Uh, 36 degrees, start and stop, one pick, four drops, 
2800 bucks on that one. So uh, when I come out of Florida for 280 a mile, we doing it. We doing it. And it's not on a produce load. This was not produce. Uh, this was actually uh, something that was came off a port, uh, you know, came in from another country. So um, kudos to that. Almost three bucks a mile to come up out of Florida on a non-produce load. Winning, I'll take it every day, all day, twice on Sunday. So that's my week. I did four loads this week. Um, more logistical than anything. Uh, getting that load to Florida on time really uh, was hard work, and it took a lot of effort, you know, to do a 1,400-mile run in less than two days. But uh, it's not unheard of. It's not like I did anything, you know, remarkable, superhuman. I mean, it was all legal. You know, I log legal everything. There is no logbook reset at my company. Sometimes I wish there was, but there's not. <laughs> um, I guess I wish there was until I'm caught up in a legal battle in court. Then I wish there wasn't. So we'll just stick with I'm glad there's not. Um, great week, though. Great week for this market. Starting off like I did coming out of Minnesota on $2 a mile. I thought, boy, oh, Lord, what have I done? Um, but it ended up being pretty dang gum good. Uh, $8,000 total gross for the week came out. 6400 of that is my money comes down to my truck to operate my part of the business. Uh, total miles all in, 2723 all miles. That's a good week for me. You know, um, I like I like them under 3000 I like them closer to 2500 But if we could gross eight grand, uh, I'd do 2700 <laughs> Come on with it. Why not? Uh, 2555, 2554, excuse me, almost added a mile to that. How dare I? 2554 on the all miles, excuse me. I'm going to have to edit all this out. Um, probably won't, but 2554 on the loaded miles, sorry, 169 on the empty miles, uh, 6% deadhead. I take it. I'll take it. In this market, my, you know, basically I'm like a 10. Anything under 10, I feel like we're winning. Anything over 10, I better be going to get some good paying freight. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about the per mile rate. 294 all miles this week. Damn good rate per mile. Of course, you know, when you get a load that's paying like almost 15 bucks a mile, it kind of bumps your numbers up a little bit, makes them look a little better. Uh, that's 235 a mile, my 80%. 313 a load in mile, so. Damn good loaded mile this week. Um, let's talk about the variable cost of running my business. Now, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to go over the variable cost. We're going to talk about some other things to do with uh, my week and trucking. Things I'm not going to talk about. Uh, truck payment, truck insurance, uh, things like that. That'll be things that you'll have to figure out if you want to, you know, if you're using this as a like part of your business plan. You have to figure those things out on your own. It's just up to you. Your truck payment is going to be different. Your taxes are going to be different. Your insurance is going to be different. Those are three things I prefer not to talk about. Taxes, truck payment, and insurance, just because it's it's kind of irrelevant. You know, my numbers have nothing to do with your numbers. Now, these variable costs, these are pretty average numbers for operating a truck. So these are something you could base uh, your business plan on. But as I said many a times before, don't just go on what I say. Get uh, as much knowledge from as many reputable people as you can. Okay. Now let's talk about diesel costs for the week. 1225 I spent on diesel this week. That's 45 cents a mile to ride down the road. Um, probably could have did a little better on that, but uh, when you're ham boning down to Florida, you know, when you, when you're mashing on it, you don't get as good a fuel economy. It's just the facts. I spent 217 on reefer fuel for the week. Uh, started off heavy, but then kind of lagged out on the end of the week. So 217 on reefer, $49 on def fluids, $14 on the scale. I scaled that very first load, nothing else after that. And I paid that one toll up there in, uh, what was that? Was that uh, Louisville, that bridge? I paid that one bridge toll. It's like twelve fifty with the easy pass. I wrote it down as twelve. Uh, total cost on the variable side was fifteen seventeen for the week. Fifteen seventeen for the week. You bring over my sixty four hundred, my eighty percent of the total gross revenue, and it is 
6400 minus the 1517 variable cost it's going to leave you it's not going to leave you it's going to leave me $4,883 left to do what I have to do with and you subtract out 500 of that I put the maintenance account um, just because you know not never hurts to have a little nest egg there uh, leaves me $4,383 left to do what I have to do with. And boy, was it nice to have a good week because we were moving during this time. And not only were we moving, but uh, the old lady's SUV had a uh, pretty significant breakdown. Cost me a couple grand on that. So uh, it was nice to have a good week because, you know, when you're moving personally, for me, it's like a money pit. You're just throwing money at everything, throwing money. Uh, so got got that done, got out of downtown Minneapolis. They can have all that down there. I don't need it. I don't want to be there. So uh, not there anymore, thankfully. And yeah, so it was nice to have a good week. Personally, it just uh, kind of put a little bit at ease. You know, it's like, um, you know, having to pay for all the moving and everything and then you know, a couple thousand dollars on a car repair, uh, man, yeah, uh, nice to have a nice to have a good week occasionally. You know, sometimes, sometimes the Lord just hits it at the right time for you. It's the way I felt on this one, but that was the week, everybody. It seems like um, I think that was probably like some of the worst uh, freight I'd seen up in Minnesota. It seems like it's getting a little better depending on where you're going right now. But uh, who knows? You know, it's kind of day to day in this truck and market. So good luck out there, everybody. Take care of each other. Remember, people are more important than trucking. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Hi, I want to talk to you real quick about the ES Advantage card. Do you need discounts at major truck stop chains? They got them. Do you need discount on shop rates at TA and Love? They got them. Tire discounts. They even got health insurance now. Click the link down below. Easy application. No credit check. Sign up. They give you a call back. They'll take all your information, and you'll be in the network.